so today we will discuss a fifth case of image formation by concave mirror. Till now, we have studied the image formations when our object was at infinity. When object was at infinity, image was formed at focus. Then when object was beyond C, in that case image was formed between center of curvature and focus. After that, the object was placed at center of curvature and image was also formed at center of curvature but when at the principal axis. Then the case was when object was placed between center of curvature and focus. So this is totally the reverse of the second case. So in that case the image was formed beyond center of curvature somewhere here. So now in our fifth case we have placed our object AB at focus itself. So now let's see we have to consider at least two rays which could be of help. So let's say one, one ray would definitely and always gonna be taken most of the time the easiest one we take is the one which is parallel to the principal axis. So obviously the one which is coming parallel to principal axis after reflecting will pass through the principal focus. Another one since who is the nearby point? See there are just uh, three points available center of curvature, focus and pole and the other thing is being parallel. So one case we have already taken that it's a parallel one. Pole is still far away you know we can't say okay still the object is somewhere between C and F whenever. See we had the case when object was beyond C, we had case when object was at C, we had case when object was between C and F and now we are having case when object is at F. In all these cases we consider that one is definitely the ray which is coming parallel and going through principal focus and in other case the easy one is that the ray coming through object would definitely try to pass through center of curvature as well and we know the ray which passes through center of curvature after reflection again retraces its path. So it goes like this. Here still it's away from pole. Pole is not uh, in that close proximity that ray would dare to go through. It might be any one but it won't be of help. So here we have these two rays. The one coming parallel to principal axis and after reflection passes to principal focus and the other one which passes through center of curvature and after reflection again retraces its path. So now these rays we just keep on extending them. We are saying that they are not gonna intersect at least not here. There might be a case when they would intersect and that would be very far away point. So at infinity maybe at infinity they would intersect. So the image would be formed at infinity. So now you can see that this case is totally the opposite of the first case. In first case, the object was at infinity and image was formed at focus. And here, object is at focus and image will be formed at infinity. So here we are not going to draw any image. We don't know how would it form because the, for the image to form, the rays must intersect. And they are not intersecting now. Maybe at, at infinite distance they would. And then it would give us the image. And always whatsoever the image is the object is standing. When we take object, we consider its base to be on principal axis. Because on principal axis also we consider the rays. The rays which pass through principal axis actually touch the bottom of the object. So... That's why whatsoever image is formed, that is also formed beneath the principal axis with the base on the principal axis itself. So base will be, base of the object, the bottom of the object will be on principal axis. But where would it, uh, its uh, head lie? The head would lie where these two rays would intersect. So if you can see that they need very very large distance and at infinite distance they would intersect and there would get the head of the object that is the A point. B point will always be on the principal axis. So 
position of object is at focus. Position of the image is going to be at infinity. So now, as I told that the bottom, the base of the image would be on the principal axis. As the base of the object is at principal axis. So they always lie on principal axis. So the image would be somewhere here beneath the principal axis with its bottom with its base touching the principal axis but since we know right now they are seeming to be parallel rays but they would definitely intersect somewhere but it's going to be very large distance at infinity so if you consider this to go on and on and on so we would say that all that distance till these two coincide and intersect would give us a very high, very highly magnified, very large image. So, size of the image is going to be highly enlarged. Finally, the nature of the image. Since image is still going to form, even if it's going to form at infinity, but it's still going to form in front of the mirror, in front of the concave mirror and beneath the principal axis. So, it's going to be real and inverted. Now, in the final case of image formation by a concave mirror, we are considering the case when our object AB is lying between principal focus and pole. So now it's very near pole. In all the cases, we used to consider at least one ray which used to be parallel to principal axis because after reflection, it used to go through focus. But now, since our object is lying between focus and pole, so if we consider any principal ray, there might be some coming, definitely. But if they, if you see that after reflection, if they try to go through focus, we won't find them on focus. Why? Because the object is coming in between. So object would act as obstacle in that case. So that's why we are not going to consider that ray. So now what other options are left? The one which is the same, that the, since center of curvature is still near, so the image would uh, pass through center of curvature and after reflection retrace its path. And here, we might take it down also, but now other thing would happen and that is that now the case is when object is very near to pole, that it, the ray is coming from it would try, would dare to hit the pole directly. And this is the case where the rays actually hit the pole. In no other case, our object was that close enough that it could have reached pole. But now since it's between focus and pole, so one of the ray would pass through pole. And we know when the ray hits the pole directly, it follows laws of reflection. And it, it it's just reflected where angle I and R are equal. So angle I is equal to angle R. And now it will go through this way. And now what we have to do is we have to retrace it. We have to extend it backwards to see because here if you see, if we extend these rays like this here, they are expanding. They are diverging rays. You can see if we expand, keep on expand, expanding these rays, they are going to diverge. They are just diverging rays. They are not going to meet and we want intersection, intersection of rays to get the final image. So these are two diverging rays, they won't help us. So then what is the other way out that we can extend them backwards. So if we extend this reflected ray backward, we go through this and if we extend this ray via center of curvature backward, we go here and here we get the point of intersection of these two rays. So, here, this is the point of intersection. Obviously, whatever is the point of intersection, that gives us the head of the object. And the base always lies on the principal axis. So, here we will get this A dash B dash as our final image. And as you see, that this principal axis basically acts like coordinate axis. You know, that if this is the coordinate axis, this portion is positive y and this portion is negative y, this portion. So similarly, if 
image is forming beneath this principal axis its base lies on principal axis and obviously the head lies somewhere else so it seems as to be inverted but here since the intersection is in the positive zone so the image won't would be no longer inverted and it's going to be an erect image so for position of object we say that object lies between focus and cone for the position of the image all we have to say is that it's going to form at the back of the mirror because at the back of the mirror all the terminologies are just imaginary things here so we just say back of the mirror no other terminologies we are going to use because it is a concave mirror and in case of concave mirror center of curvature focus they all lie in front so we will simply say that here image would be at the back of the mirror so for size of the image it's going to be enlarged so you can see that here this is the object ab and this is our image and it is simply formed by extending these two rays backwards so since they have this upward slant so obviously the image is going to be larger going to be taller than the object so here we see that a dash b dash is greater than ab so now for nature of the image it is virtual and erect since the image is forming at the back of the mirror and as mentioned earlier if image forms at the back of the mirror it is always virtual and erect so it is virtual so we cannot obtain it we cannot physically obtain the image anywhere on the screen and it is erect because if it is virtual if it is at the back it is going to be erect so these two go side by side and we can also see here that image also lies in the positive zone in the upper region of principal axis so it is so erect this was all about image formation by concave mirror we have discussed six cases and after that we'll continue with the image formation by convex mirror thank you